But now it is time for the first woman of the week of 2021. And this week it is alternative R&B artist Abisha. Abisha is a singer-songwriter from Paynton in Devon. And even though she's only been releasing music since 2017 on her Spotify then at least, uh, she's released a lot of singles, a fantastic EP called Scorpio. And I'm also really excited to see what's to come from her in 2021. Um, We chatted about representation, her musical journey, growing up in a straight white community, which I can definitely relate to, just really difficult, um, and her favourite women in music. But first, I wanted to ask her the, uh, the question on everyone's lips. How was your 2020? 2020 started really good. It started, like, amazing. I was like, this is the best time of my life, like... It was so good. I went to the Brits for the first time. Um, I was going to like loads of events and music. I went to see like loads of concerts. I saw like Mahalia, Owanda, um, and like was just doing a lot. And I was like in the studio a lot and making more music. I released my first EP, some music videos. So it started off so good. And then we hit March and it just went severely downhill. (laughs) and at the beginning, like I stayed, I stayed quite positive just because I think we didn't know how bad it was going to be. And I was like writing from home. I tried to like pick up my guitar, which I haven't played in ages and like learn some new like strumming patterns and try and do some covers. And I was quite good at it for a while. And then I think as like, it was just going on longer and longer. I was just like, oh my God, like how long is this going to last? Um, and then the year kind of got progressively worse and worse and worse um, and ended quite badly. But other than that, I'm trying to stay positive for 2021. Yeah, I, I just hope everyone's 2021 is better than the yeah. last one. So can you tell me about your sound? Because you've kind of grown over the years of your like musical journey. Um, yeah. So how would you describe your sound now? Uh, I think like, it it is like always changing and it's like something I think that will always be like ever evolving because I'm I'm a very like indecisive person and like I love change and I think with every song that I write it's like it's a slightly different sound and it's inspired by something else or how I'm feeling at that time or I just like different things and different sounds I think like the core of it will always be like alt R&B. Like there's always going to be like an R&B element of it, but not in like the traditional sense, like more of an alternative R&B. I like really like weird sounds in music, like like odd little like vocal sounds and like pitching things up and distorting them. Um, I think like as much as, I don't know why it pains me to say it, but it's definitely got an element of pop in it too. Again, not like mainstream pop too much, but just like, I like throwing a few drummers in. My last single time alone had like a kind of Afrobeat feel to it, which like is something that I really wanted to incorporate. Um, So I love time alone for that reason. Um, But yeah, it is always changing. I think at at its core, it'll probably be like alternative R&B. Um, but yeah, who knows what other types of elements I'll throw into it. <laughs> what kind of like musicians are you inspired by? Um, who's on your playlist a lot and just listening to? Loads of like, I'm, I'm loving like UK R&B at the moment. So like, I've got so much like Mahalia, Ray, Ella May, And then I also love like Neo, Her. Um, and then like there's 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 people that like I just listen to every day like oh wonder because like I find them so calming and relaxing and but I like my music taste also changes all the time so I like discover a new artist be obsessed with them for like a month and listen to like nothing but them and then I'll find a new one and I'll do the same thing again um but like obviously Rihanna is like my ultimate like queen i just think she can she can do every genre and like smash it can you tell me more about rihanna because you've chosen her as your favorite <laughs> woman in music why do you just think, over her? <laughs> i am obsessed with her i just think that she is like there's nothing that she can't do like we'll start with music obviously like she has like done co- like covered pretty much every genre in a way like maybe not like rock or heavy metal but like she every song that she has like song is completely different and like I think with her tone like as soon as you hear a Rihanna song you know it's Rihanna 
that you hear one second of her voice and you're like, it's Rihanna. And I just think like her tone is like incredible. One of the best tones ever. Um, I just think I love how she's like so bold and she will literally just like do whatever she wants and no, like not care what anyone else thinks about it. And like aside from her music, like her fashion, like I think she's like one of the biggest like style icons without even necessarily like trying to be even like just her effortless styles are like just incredible um she's obviously now like an insane businesswoman as well which like i mean what can she not do can you believe that song came out nine years ago? That's California Kingbed by Rihanna on the Women in Music show. Uh, Rihanna is Abisha's favourite woman in music and Abisha is my first woman of the week of 2021. Um, and also, as we all know in the LGBT community, um, representation and feeling like we belong in a community is so important. And as a queer mixed race rom- woman growing up in Paynton in Devon uh, was a difficult experience for a Bisha, as she told me. I think um, I was just always aware from like such a young age that I was different or I looked different to everyone else. Like I was the only mixed race person like that I knew. Um, so uh, like I did dancing from a young age. So like my mum put me in dance classes to build my confidence because I was such a shy kid. Um, and I think like that just made it even more apparent to me how different I was because you're literally stood in front of a mirror with... 20 other kids who look completely like they look completely different to me they like I just wanted to look like them I wanted blonde hair and like just hated that I had big curly hair and like brown skin and just like it was made so obvious to me and then like obviously not in a uh in a negative way but the other kids would often be like oh let me touch your hair it's so like squishy and they'd like pull my curls down and ping them back up and like at, like at the time it didn't upset me it just made it even more apparent that like I was so different from them and it made me feel like an alien um and then growing up I think like getting a bit older it was kind of just something that was always like reinforced in like not not necessarily in a negative way but it was something that like would be commented on or like made jokes about or and within like my friendship groups it was something that like was kind of like a joke or my nickname was like related to the color of my skin and like it wasn't again it wasn't in a malicious way it was just like the way that like we were as friends but it reinforced it for me and made it more apparent and was kind of a reminder that I was so different it made me quite insecure in a way that like when I started to kind of like date I would be like why do they want to be with me and like not somebody who looks normal like they could be with that girl who like is white and and to to me like it's so sad but white was normal and I therefore wasn't normal so I'd it made me like lack a lot of confidence and couldn't understand why someone would want to be with me and not somebody that looked normal. Did music help with that then like growing up and having that representation or did you find that representation just wasn't there in music either? I think like it helped subconsciously I wasn't like particularly aware of it at the time or how like it had an impact on me but I know that I was always drawn to artists who were mixed race or black or that like like I could kind of relate to in terms of how I look so when I was like five I was obsessed with Scary Spice for example and like wanted to dress like her and like like had Scary Spice outfits and stuff and it's like so apparent now that like out of the five five Spice Girls like she was the one that I chose to like look up to and obviously it was because the one she was the one that I thought that I looked like and then the same as like I got a bit older and my dad would send me like DVDs of um kind of like R&B music and there was like I discovered Alicia Keys and like Keisha Cole and like these other artists which like I then was like oh this is really cool there's artists that do look like me and then I think as I got a bit older again like Rihanna was somebody that like I chose to relate to and I think because she was so successful like it gave me kind of hope that I could also like achieve those things like despite the fact that I thought I was so different. So how important is it for you now to like write about that in your music um and how do you relate those experiences like now to what you do as a job I think it's quite it is really important to me and it's hard and I've I've not really found like the perfect way to do it yet 
And I think that's something that like I'm starting to like dig deeper with my music now and get like a bit deeper with like what I'm writing about and like the meaning behind it. And I think like I've opened up a lot about like my sexuality in my music and I've always wanted to like use female pronouns and like not make it kind of like I don't want to not use pronouns at all, which is like what something that I was told to do in the past just so that like to avoid alienating like straight listeners, which is like crazy. Um but yeah, I've always wanted I've always been like really determined to like use female pronouns and not hide my sexuality in my music. And I think like with the with my experiences growing up, that's something that like I haven't found exactly how to put into music yet. But I think like the vulnerability and the like identity stuff that I've experienced is I think like are things that I've touched upon which do relate to it. And there's a song that I haven't released yet, um, which does touch upon like these experiences as well. So yeah, hopefully when that one comes out that will be something that people can also relate to. I guess it's also quite therapeutic as well to like write about that. I wish I had that like songwriting talent to just <laughs> put all of my feelings into something. Yeah, um, it's it's the best thing. It's like the best release of um like I've always written and the process of like actually writing a song in the studio and like recording it and then listening back to it is like the ultimate like therapy for me I just like yeah it's so it's so good to like put it into a song and have kind of like gained something from it and like something positive from it and like the experience like no matter how bad it's been like you've got this tiny piece of like you in a, in the form of a song that like has been like the positive outcome from the situation which is yeah really good so what song would you like to pick first to play on gorgeous fm (laughs) um maybe we should go with time alone which is my latest single so can you talk to me about time alone i played this song on women music show a lot recently so oh thank you so much um yeah time alone is a song that i wrote um like just after the first lockdown and I wrote it with these two amazing producers and songwriters called Greg and Dan and we like just clicked straight away and it's basically about like feeling really overwhelmed by everything I'm someone that gets like really easily overwhelmed I let all of my like kind of emotions build up inside me and just want to lock myself away to deal with it and yeah I get so overwhelmed that I just need to take myself away from a situation and just have some time alone (laughs) um to like recharge my energy and it's like even if I'm with a group of people and I'm with them for like not even that long period of time but like I just I notice my energy draining from me quite easily and I just need to recharge that and yeah time alone is basically about that (laughs) time alone such a tune that's time alone by abisha this week's woman of the week that's her latest single as well uh, it's such a bop i've played it a few times on the women in music show and every time it just gets me kind of swaying and i sing along um and it's great um but abisha has worked so so hard to get up to this point in her career um but i'm so nosy and i just want to know what's in store for this gal this year so can you tell me what you're working on at the moment? Is there anything that like you're hoping to release in 2021? Yeah, I've got a couple of songs that I wrote um, late last year that I'm looking forward to releasing and hopefully will release soon. And then another one that I wrote really recently um, in December, which I also want to release. Um, everything is very like personal that I've been writing. Um, and again, like experiences that I've had that I want to like, dig a bit deeper into rather than like kind of more like relationships which is like the easiest thing to write about like love heartbreak relationships all that kind of thing and as much as like there is some of that stuff in there um there's also a lot of things that like are representative of like my growing up and like me as a person um and things that I think that a lot of other people will be able to relate to so yeah hopefully a few singles are on the way and then yeah, I don't, I don't know what the plan is from there. Maybe another EP or an album. Do you think um, you're working towards an album or is it just EPs at the moment you're like working I'd like towards? I'd like to release an album. I think there may be one more EP before an album comes. But yeah, hopefully an album as soon as possible. And hopefully maybe playing live as well when we can. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely looking forward to like live shows again because yeah, I miss that. I miss that. 
there's so many people I want to see live now. It's just like all these women I'm interviewing for a women in music show. I just want, they're totting up, but I just want to see all of them live. So hopefully you'll be like in the West Midlands soon. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, hopefully. I'd love to be. I mean, I know you did Birmingham Pride the other year. Was it, what year was that? Was that last year? Or, no, 2019, it before. 2019. 2019, yeah. I'm so excited to go to the Pride Festival one day. Yeah, when, I know. Babe. When COVID will allow us, you know. <laughs> it's so fun. <laughs> um, before we talk about the next song that you're going to pick, um, what, what do you, would you say is the biggest lesson you've learned during your career so far? Um, I think to not compare myself to other people. Um, well, like, yeah, other artists especially. And I think to not be so hard on myself in terms of, like, releases and success early on. It's more just about, like, the journey and the fact that, like, the keeping what I'm writing authentic. I think it would be easy to write something that sounds exactly like something else on the radio and be like this is going to be like successful because it sounds just like that and I think like although it's so like it's so hard to take kind of the slower route um I think it like I just have to remind myself that like like, it will pay off so much more down the line when I know that I've like stayed authentic to myself as an artist and as a person and not just like molded to what I think is gonna make me successful Mm-hmm. and yeah I think it just in terms of like comparing yourself to other people in general like I think everybody does it and I think it is the biggest like happiness killer ever because half of what we compare ourselves to online isn't even real um and people like appear to have like the perfect lives when like nobody really does everybody's struggling everybody's got their own like problems and issues and yeah I just think it's so easy to do that and it's like so hard to stop I, I'm definitely guilty of that as well I literally just learned that like last year I've been living yeah. like 20 years of my life just comparing myself all the time and now I'm just like yeah. just, just calm down just do what, you, yeah. do what you're good at you know <laughs> yeah exactly. exactly and if we were all the same then like it would just be pointless anyway what is the next song that you would like to play on Gorgeous FM I've never done this before where people have like <laughs> I, I like it I know it's making me nervous um <laughs> I think I'd like to play Love Like This um, because it is the song that I wrote that is uh, like encouraging people to be themselves and be okay with who they are. Obviously, it's like a pride song for me. It's, it's like being open about my sexuality and encouraging other people to love themselves for who they are and not be ashamed of that and to just kind of like basically shout it from the rooftops and be like unashamed to be who you are as a person, whether you're like in the LGBTQ plus community, however you identify just like who you are is like perfect. And to, yeah, be encouraged to just like be so open and honest about that and embrace it. I love that. Uh, also, the video is just great. So <laughs> <Absolutely. Going to laughs> <notice. laughs> I love the video too. <laughs> um, so finally, um, in true radio style, could you introduce your song "Love Like This" for Gorgeous FM? I can. Um, I'm Avisha, and this is "Love Like This," and I hope you enjoy it. That's "Love Like This" by Abisha. She was this week's Woman of the Week. What a bop that was! Absolutely love that song. And um, go and check out the video for that song. Um, it was filmed in New York, and it's very, very cute. That's all I'm saying. You go check it out for yourselves. It's it's just a great video. Um, you can check out Abisha on all social media. Just search for Abisha. That is spelt A B I S H R A. Even A at the end. Um, and yeah, go and check her out. She's awesome. Can't wait to see what's what's to come from her this year. And also a special shout out to Shane, her PR manager, who's probably the the nicest PR manager I've ever dealt with ever. Um, Shane, if you're listening, you're great. He's also a local guy as well. He's from Dudley. Um, So yeah, (laughs) thanks so much, Shane, for just being awesome. Um, And also a massive thanks to Abisha as well for all her time. And um, I'm just excited to see um, what's what's in store in 2021 from that gal um anyway next up i've got a song 